Hey everyone, Aisha Vermansky here with beachcation.com and in this class we're going to take the ever so popular bar necklace and we're going to add a little bit more detail to make it even that much better. We're going to solder little jump rings onto the top. So this dainty little project is going to take your bar necklaces up to the next step. So grab your torch and your safety glasses and let's get started. So we're all set up here to prep the loops that we're going to solder. I have a Tronix oval head razor flush cutter here. It's number 7113. It's an awesome cutter. A medium coarse file, a handy ring clamp, and then of course my little bits and bobbles here. I have two sterling silver jump rings and my little bar, which I've already, already stamped, ready to go. I'm going to show you how to use jump rings to create the loops that we're going to solder at the top of the bar. Of course you could fabricate your own using just regular wire, but I just find uh, modifying a jump ring is so much easier. So Let's lay this out really quick. So I'm going to trim these, but just as a visual, kind of a wonky visual, but still a visual. This is close to what I'm working towards. So let's trim these jump rings. This is very small work, so bear with me here. There's a little jump ring, and I'm gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna use the split that's already there, um, and then cut the other side. So come in with my flush cutters. little rainbow. I'm going to do the same thing to the other jump ring. See how I'm using the flush side of the cutters right up to the jump ring? If I were to cut with this side, I would get a little nip and I don't want that. I want these to be nice and flat. Depending on the flush cutter or cutters that you're using at home, you may need to do some cleanup here at the end of the jump ring. It's very important that it's very flat. And that flush cutter is pretty fantastic. So to be honest, I wouldn't even file the ends if you have this flush cutter, um, but let me show you how to resolve if you don't have that flush cutter. But these are super teeny. So what I like to do is take a pliers and hold it here. Bring in the ring clamp. We just want the, the li just a little bit of metal sticking out beyond the boundary of the ring clamp. We don't want to re remove too much metal. There we go. Just like that. Next I'm going to place the wedge in the back of the ring clamp, pushing quite firmly. So now our little jump ring is secure in the clamp. Grab your medium grit file. And I know this seems kind of overkill because it's huge, but I'm mostly, I'm comfortable um, with a larger file like this. And what you're gonna do is hold the ring clamp firmly with your non-dominant hand. And with your dominant hand, you're gonna swipe across the top of those two little ends of the jump ring and hit both of them at the same time. This should just take a couple of swipes. And that looks good to me. A tip is if you're questioning if it's flat on the end, you can take a close look and if there's one plane of file marks, 
um, you know that it's flat. If you have kind of like lots of file marks coming from all different et kinds of ends, what happens is it looks kind of like you have some file marks coming this way and some coming from this way, you know it's not flat. You want them all to be going the same way. Let's get that little ring out of there. And just, just for fun, let's do the other one on camera here. Hold it when the pliers. Pushing it in a little in a little bit. I just want just a hair of metal sticking out because I'm just removing a little bit. Place the wedge in the back of the clamp. Push for firmly. Grab a file, flat flat side of the file. Looks good. It's really important to get this step right because you really, you really want these to be flat and flush and touching all four points. And let's, let's check. Looks good. No gaps or weird places. Sometimes one end it'll be like at a little angle and just a little tip will be touching and you'll say, ooh, it's close enough. Um, I promise you it's, it's better to go back and do the filing um, because your solder won't fill a gap and you'll get a little frustrated. So just make sure to uh, get everything felt flat, flush, and touching, and then you're good to solder. I'm all set up to solder our little loops onto our bar here. I wanted to show you all the goodies that we're gonna use to do that. I have a charcoal block easy wire solder. This is a fat daddy cutter for cutting the wire solder, but you can use like any junky cutter you have around. You don't want to use your super nice ones. Not that these are junky. These are really good cutters, but they're really strong, so they'll do a good job. Safety glasses, quench cup, some flux and a brush, wooden handle cross-locking tweezers, and then I always have on hand my soldering tweezers. And all these things are on a non-combustible work surface, and I'm in a well-ventilated room. Let's start by cutting our solder pallions here. You want them to be pretty teeny, about half a millimeter. All right, let's see what I have here. One. Two. Let's cut a little bit more. They're very little. All right, so there are six. I like to give myself a little extra just in case something happens. Now I'm gonna hold one of my rings 
in preparation in the cross-locking tweezers. Just like so. Next, I'll flux the end of the jump ring. And you know what, while we're at it, let's do, let's do all the flexing. Flex the end of this jump ring. And then let's also flex the edge of the bar. I realized a very important part when I was talking about tools earlier. I totally forgot to tell you that you are going to need a small butane torch. It's pretty um, crucial to the whole soldering thing. I'm gonna strike the torch. Pick up my cross-locking tweezers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pre-warm the jump ring just a little bit, just warming up that flux. And then I'm going to come over here to the solder and melt a pallion. Bring in the jump ring and attach it to the end, just like that. Now let's attach one to the right side. Heat a pallion, touch it to the end, just like that. I'm going to heat it up a little bit so it flows just a little bit. There it goes, there it goes. Lay, lay that one down. Let's turn the torch off here. So this one has solder pre-float on it. See the solder there on the ends? That's perfect. Now let's do the second ring. Strike the torch. Preheat that little ring just a little bit. Warm up that flux in that ring. Come on in with your flame, heat a pallion, touch it to the end. Same thing on the opposite end. We noticed that went a little bit out of focus, so trust me that it's there. But I'm going to show you here that one on the right, my fuel is running low, so I'm trying to push it, get it to flow a little bit more. And there we go, it's attached. Torch is off. Lay that down there. I am going to take a break and put some butane in my torch. Let's put our pieces into place. Sounds silly, but make sure that the pieces are touching. Sometimes we think they are and they aren't. Make sure to, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to move this, the block because I want to work on a very flat piece of my block and there was a lot of texture in that area. This is kind of a putsy part, but it's worth it. Take the time. 
as I'm making these final adjustments, let me tell you. So I'm using the charcoal black um, mostly because that's what was closest to me. For this project, you can use a solderite board, a kiln block, um, or a charcoal block. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to strike up the torch again and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to heat the whole piece evenly and when the flux on the bar starts to turn glossy I'm going to focus more of my heat here and I'm not actually pointing at the jump ring, I'm pointing at the bar here on the bar and here on the bar. We are soldering a teeny tiny piece to a fairly large piece in comparison to the jump rings and they're going to get enough residual heat. There's no reason to target them and heat them directly. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to keep my uh, soldering tweezers in my hand so that if I need to push anything, I can. See I'm heating in a circle, kind of back and forth along the bar. Alright, see how that flux is shiny and glossy? Let's focus more of our heat here on the right side. If the solder doesn't flow right away, that's alright. Let's make another pass. Come down here to the left. There it goes. Beautiful. Now to the right side. And beautiful. Nice and easy. Torch off. Wait five to, ten, five to ten seconds, and then quench. Here is the piece fresh out of the pickle pot. The pickle pot removes the copper oxides that come to the surface while soldering. And it looks really nice. Next I'm going to show you how to just buff this up a little bit. I'm going to do the quick and dirty method here of darkening our stamped impressions using a sharpie marker. Just take that little sharpie, fill in that flower. I stamp the word brave here on the blank. and the other flower. Make sure that Sharpie dries thoroughly before you use your Pro Polish pad. Pro Polish pads really don't like to be wet, so we'll just start on the back side. Looks nice.
I noticed the ink didn't go in the impressions here on the B or at the end of the E. There we go. And there you go, we have a cute bar with the little ring soldered on, and now we can connect this in any way we'd like. If you happen to use too much solder, or the solder may meander a little bit, I'm gonna show you in the back here, it's a good uh, little thing to show you. See that little dollop of solder there? I'm gonna show you how to remove that. Not that you have to, you could just leave it like this. I'm gonna use a flex shaft tool which is a motorized tool so it's important that you put your hair back put your safety glasses on and if you're sensitive to airborne things so put on a face mask I'm going to start by using this silicone wheel which is the medium grit silicone wheel and this is the square shape and it's mounted on a screw mandrel Get the tool rotating. We say that you wanna go about 30 miles an hour, not 90 miles an hour. So this is 30 miles an hour and that's 90 miles an hour. There's no reason to go that fast when using this tool. All right, so there is our little dollop of solder. I'm gonna get the wheel going. See how I'm using my thumb to support here, support the piece. You know what I noticed? I did not mount this wheel tight enough. It keeps getting um, stuck. Let me bring this up so you can see how what it looks like now. Oh, airplane. Can you see that, Lisa? Mm I'm gonna to switch to the blue wheel next. This is less aggressive and will remove any marks that the gray wheel created while it was grinding away the solder. See how I'm going in nice little circles? So keep things consistent. There we go, that looks pretty nice. Now to blend this together so that the metal has a consistent finish, I'm going to use the Peach 3M radial wheels. And these are really great little wheels. Same maneuver, work in circles. But this time I'm gonna start from where I was working and travel all the way across the blank. Mm, that looks nice. And now you have a much more consistent and well-finished back. Let's take a look at the front again. 
I think those solder joints look pretty good, so I'm gonna leave them. And I think this looks great, it is done. Thanks so much for watching my class. I really appreciate it. And for you folks on YouTube, remember you can leave a comment below if you have any questions. Give us a thumbs up if you like the class and please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks.